Well, hello, folks. How are you doing? Yesterday, I went to an auction. Look at this lovely magnolia tree. Drop on its leaves. Anyhow, I went to another auction yesterday, Monday. And what did I get? Now, I didn't film at this auction because I didn't have their permission. So, I couldn't film, well, I didn't film at that auction. Turns out I could have done because they were absolutely fine with it. So, let's open this up because I'll put it in there. Some of you guys might just like this. So, let me come round here and open this bad boy up. There we go. Right, you will see an array of engines in there. Most you have seen before. You have seen the two Hondas that come from Swaffham. I've now put them in there. This one come from Swaffham, the little Tanaka generator. Oh, that's not old. That's one I use for the caravan. Of course, Norman has pride of place, but look at this bad boy. Now then, let's drag him out, and then you can have a closer look. Now, for the princely sum of £12, yes, you heard this right, 12 quid, I picked up this thing. Here we come. Here we have one of the beefiest compressors I have ever seen. Now, if some of you guys think this thing looks familiar, not this actual one, take away the cover, take away the engine, and look at the cylinder arrangement in the back, you'll see similarities to one I've got down at Man Cave HQ with a big tank on the back here, what someone had put on. This, however, is totally standard, and it was 12 quid. Why was it 12 pound? Well, let's have a look. Right, we are tugging and tugging, and nothing. So our engine is, yeah, it'll turn a little bit. Right, there are one of three things happened here. Either we have got really lucky and it's just this recoil which has seized because the engine tries to turn back, but it's like trying to pull the string in. So we've got a little bit of movement in the engine, but it won't go forward. It's like it's locked. So one of three things has happened. Either the clutch on this engine for this, you know, for this recoil, the recoil itself. Recoils don't normally jam up. The clutches can if the little bearings in and what flick out. If they stick, that can play up. But either way, either that's playing up, she's either a bit seized in the bore or got a stuck valve because I think this thing has spent a lot of time outside with a look of the rust on the top of that or she's blown up and thrown a rod and she's all bound up because the con rod's flapping around in the crankcase I haven't even looked at it I picked it up yesterday, bought it home, stuck it in here but we'll have a look around this thing I can't make out what horsepower that Briggs is I'm guessing she's a sizable one. I'm guessing she's probably eight horsepower, seven, eight horsepower, something like that. If any of you can decipher from the remainders of that sticker what horsepower this is, or by any information on there, ah, I don't know where the type model and code number is on that. Probably ah, ah, normally in here somewhere, or stamped in the stamped in here there's a type model and code number i think they're actually stamped on the top on these but it's so rusted i can't see i can't make it out i'll have a no can't make it out either way oh god fuel cap is well and truly seized on oh, do anything undo on this or is the problem where the compressor unit is seized. Another good point, isn't it? Because it's direct drive via a V-belt. So is the compressor unit seized? I don't think so. I don't think they're quite direct drive. I think there's probably a centrifugal clutch. So you start your engine without your compressor. 
and once the engine picks up speed it then kicks in i think that's how this works i wonder if we can tip this a bit and look underneath and see if the compressor will turn well let's see i want to see <clears throat> do we have oil and so i couldn't believe my luck when this was only 12 pound she oh, look at that she is full of oil which is actually still see-through that oil actually looks pretty damn good is there oil in the compressor <laughs> oh, i can't open it no oh, i can't open it well i'll check that another time <clears throat> let's have a look at the air filter a bit loose oh it undoes i bet you this air filter is just um i bet that's an old foam air filter and if it's any sort of age, which I'm sure it probably is by the looking at this thing. Can't see anyone's done any maintenance on this in a while. I bet you that air filter will just be like um, Oasis, what you do fly range, and you'll just poke your finger in it, I'm guessing. Oh, that'll just disintegrate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at this air filter. There you go. So the air filter is... Look at that, it's just, yeah, it's broken up. Don't want to drop that down the carb, yeah. Oh, look at that, the air filter's just disintegrated. So, all right, we know we've got to do a new air filter. No doubt we're going to have to have this carb off and clean this. But, oh, this is another thing I can't do until my shed is finished. But I just wanted to show you guys around this thing. We'll have a look around the compressor end in a minute. Now, if you're thinking there's no air tank on this, if it's anything like the old twin I've got at home, I've got a twin one down Norfolk Man Cave, down HQ, very much the same as this. And trust me, that pumps out so much air, it does not need an air tank. Whatever you put on the hose, it'll run it direct from the compressor i know that because i actually used an air power da and a spray gun and the compressor was still blowing off at the valve because it could put out more than that was taken this also goes with this kind of airline fitting these are not mickey mouse airline fittings these are the commercial ones like sandblasters or road hammers anything that require a really high volume of air uses these connectors here as you can see by the size of the outlet in there she's no quarter inch here is the compressor itself the compressor actually looks in really nice condition the air filters are still on here which is nice it don't look damaged or knocked around and the paintwork looks really good on that now was this an x rental machine i don't think so because i don't think there's a rental sticker on it all our blow-off pipes are all still on and in situ. Hang on. Winds in an awkward quarter. Ah, there, oh there. There we go. Yeah, so our blow-off pipes are still on here. Excellent. Let's see if... What's this under here? Oh, that's the exhaust for the engine under there, look. The old end is rotted all. So, yeah, she's got a silencer on there. Is the blow-off valve free? Yep. Yeah, blow off valve a spray could do with a bit of oil. Let me see if we can tip this thing up. I'm trying to do all this one handed. Alright, we've got her. Yeah, we've got her tipped over. Will the compressor turn? Oh yes, look. Ah, that is a clutch there. See that centre boss was on the engine? Don't turn the outer drum, do. Yep, compressor turns, look. Yep, we haven't got a problem with the compressor. Cool, them wheels are nice and free, look. On bearings. Let's tip him back. I don't want to get oil running everywhere. So, this is what we have got, guys. So at some point, once the shed's finished, I will show you more updates on that in a second. 
this is something we can be getting in the shed and this can be the new man cave outdoor compressor you know the old one with the pet of diesel on I've got down man cave HQ well I'll probably leave I was going to bring that one back here but I'll probably leave that down man cave HQ so there is one still down there and we can use this one around here obviously I'll have the electric one for in the shed for just blowing bits off but if we want to do anything I haven't said anything yet but there's a chance I'm going to be doing a respray on another YouTuber's quite famous Rolls Royce soon it might happen might not we'll see we'll see how it gets on but it's possible I shall be doing a respray on a Rolls Royce soon and this can be the tool that powers the spray gun. What do you reckon? You can get... I'll take this fitting off here and put a standard airline fitting back on. Because I don't really need that high volume of air what this thing can pump out. And this would run my sandblasting cabinet. Because my electric compressor just can't keep up with my sandblast cabinet. This thing will certainly keep up with a sandblast cabinet. If you want to look at the... Oh, what's the make of that? How do you pronounce that? Dill is it? Silt? Tilt? I ain't got a clue. What's on here, look? Products for the oils. So there's the recommended oils. There's the recommended engine maintenance. There we go. Ah, there's the make. Ah, spit. Spit. Well, that's a hell of a name, and that's a stit split split six hundred. I don't know. She's one hell of a compressor, though. And I've never seen. I've seen shielded HT leads before, but I've never seen a shielded HT lead on a Briggs and Stratton. That's very strange to me that the HT lead is shielded and has a cap over the spark plug. Will that come off without breaking anything? There we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that lovely little cap. And look how clean that's kept the plug. Wow. See that HT lead has got the metal braiding around it. There we go. I have never seen a shielded HT lead on a air compressor. And certainly not on a Briggs & Stratton engine. Oh, this little cap is lovely. Oh, that's how you turn it off, look. There's your little switch. I wondered how you turned this off. Little switch there. This is old, of course, years ago. In more recent years, they actually had a kill wire, which would have connected to the throttle linkage, and you would have stopped it by pulling the lever up. And that would have cut the ignition. This has actually got a little cap block. What else onto your plug to kill it? How cool is that? Put the little cap on. I do love that little cap on there. Very unusual for Briggs and Stratton. Unless this was something to do... I wouldn't have thought it was military, because it ain't military colours, but maybe it was used in a military setting or a shielded setting where a shielded plug was necessary. I do not know. But there you go. So there is the Spit 600 air compressor. What we got in here? Is that another oil... Is that another oil thing there? I haven't got a clue. But isn't this a beast? Runs on two V-belts. <sighs> yeah, she got the twin V-belts. So yes, this will be really nice to get going. I just hope we can save that original engine. If not, we could put this uh, 10 horsepower Honda on there. I don't like changing engines and putting something else on I'd rather keep it original and try and save this old Briggs oh that is an old Briggs that's got the glass float bowl and um, float bowl sorry that's got the glass sediment bowl on the petrol tank look so that shows that this old engine's probably a 60s do you know the, the engine looks older than the compressor I can't see this compressor being 1960s not with that font of writing and I don't know but this Briggs is definitely pre-electronic ignition, so she will have a set of points in that flywheel, which no doubt we'll have to clean. But having that old, that old style glass bowl on there 
tells me that this engine is, and the style of decal, tells me this engine's probably 60s. That machine's not 60s, that machine is probably 90s, 80s perhaps. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is the original engine. I'm looking for telltale signs that the engine's been changed. Right, we've got two engine mounts held on with U-bolts. That looks original though. That, I don't know. Is that original, guys? Let's lift her up. Is all this engine mount and under here original? Right, we have channel there, C channel here. Adjustable, clamped on with U-bolts. I'm guessing it is. I'm guessing that is an original engine mount. Because this acts as a sort of tank, this air, this frame. So if you're wondering about this tubular frame, it does actually act as a bit of a reservoir to store air. That's why there are drain taps, which are totally seized up. That's why there is a drain tap here and a drain tap there. Because this actual frame, not the handle obviously, just the framework does act as a air receiver or an air tank. Let's see that frame comes all the way around. And on this frame, you have your outlet and your blow-off valve come in here. Excellent. So, yes, this is this bad boy I want to show you. Let's now have a look at the shed. And we'll see how far we've got with the shed. Now, we've got a little bit done since you last saw. We have now got the roof felted. There she is. Roof is all felted now. So the shed is watertight. You can see some rolls of felt. I bought some 10 meter rolls of felt and the felt they give you with this shed was absolutely crap. It was horrible thin stuff that was useless. Inside the shed, well, we've done a little bit. You can see the hexi-cut saw is in pride of place. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, four foot strip lights pop in here. Are these four or three foot lights? Can't remember. So I need to wire these guys, like all the wires hang here, look. So I need to wire these all in one so they work off one switch. So I gotta somehow work out how to wire one light to the other, to the other, to the other. So when I put one switch on, the boom, they all come in. I don't know how to do that, but I'll I'll work it out. Can't be that hard. So yes, this is inside our shed now. We have the windows in, the glass all in the shed, which is really nice. Yes, the felt was ripped. I'll tell you for why, because I unrolled it. I unrolled the damn felt, and where it had been stood on the end, that had mangled the end of the felt up, and I didn't realise until I... Whee! Give it a fork and he go and pushed it to unroll it and realised that it was actually catching and ripping itself as an undone. But we'll either trim that. I think we'll probably trim that snag off level with the woodwork. We don't want that hanging there like a hemorrhoid. So yes, here is the shed, guys. She is all done. Like I said, this is the 20 for 10. And yeah, really happy with it. She's a nice size shed. We have a unit already here, which the neighbour kindly donated. This is an old pine bookcase. Nice and strong. Believe me, she's strong. So yes, we can put a lot of crap on that. This end, we'll have... Right. This piece here, this section between this post and this post. In time... That section will come out to give me a pedestrian doorway to the house. Because a lot of you were saying, oh, you put the double doors on the wrong end. People can break in from that end. And do you know what I mean? Yes, I totally agree. But this door is on this end for a reason. Because this is going to be the end where I actually come in and out of. So when I bring an engine in, I'll bring it in here. The Barford, you know, the Barford Atoms, the Bonza truck, they can all drive in this end. Obviously, this is a double door. They'll drive in this end, 
My work area is going to be about halfway of the shed to about here, so that'll give us sort of 10 or even 11, maybe 12 feet. And we'll have a workbench along this side. The workbench will then come out to sort of here. Then we'll have another bench along here, coming up to the end of this window or up to that bookcase even. And then we'll have a pedestrian walkway through there. And I'm going to build another shed on the back of this. Probably a 10 by 8 or something. And that's, that's going to have benches. And that's going to be what I call my tool room. So things like um, pillar drills. Um, bench grinders. All the electric tools. I don't particularly want cluttering my workbench up. So I shall have a proper tool room in there. And in time, a metal lathe, as and when I can drop onto one at a reasonable price, I will get a metal lathe and put in there. So through this gap here, the doorway will be, that'll go into another shed, which will be the tool room. This will be an actual workshop only. I'm not going to store crap in here. You wouldn't think of looking at it, but we're not. This is going to be to work in. So that's where I'll have my engines. My bonds, uh, anything like that can come in here, be worked on. And this door, I have put a key lock on it now. But also, once the door is in the other end, I will have a solid piece of wood and two brackets. And this door will be bolted inside, you know what I mean? Where we'll have two big heavy metal L brackets on there and a bit of wood dropped across it. And more on your door. So these doors cannot be opened from the outside not being funny the whole shed is not that secure the polycarbonate windows you could push them buggers through if i'm perfectly honest if if someone wanted to get in here in the quiet they just use a hammer and pull the feather edge off do you know what i mean how safe can you make a shed you know a wooden shed if they want to get in they will but we're not going to make it easy for them. So this door will be bolted from the inside so it can't be opened. And my pedestrian way will be through there into another shed. And then the end of the other shed will have the door facing the house. So that would be the easy way in. This would be a lot trickier to get in. But yes, so our roof is done, our felt is done. Our shed is lovely. So thank you very much for watching guys this little updated video of what's going on oh <laughs> this will make you laugh as well when i was at the auction yesterday look what lot number this was 576 a half an hour before that there was lot number 490 and look what it was there was a piece of airline with that end on look <laughs> so i actually bought this before the compressor and this big heavy bit of water pipe come with it as well could be handy for a water pump on a rally that water pipe so yes yeah, so if we want at the high volume i do have <laughs> this piece of airline and look at the bore of that for an airline you know that shift air when you've got a what's that three quarter inch bore in there so yeah, I actually bought that pipe. Oh, by the way, them two bits of pipe were a pound. This old tin metal box, which is about, I don't know, three and a half foot long, pound. So yes, the compressor, 12 pound. I could not believe my luck when I got this thing for 12 quid. Because I think it's an absolute beast. Even though it has a totally rotten air filter. But there you go. I'm going to call it a day now. And we will see you guys next time for another video. So there we go. The Spit 600 air compressor. Aha! What a beast. <laughs>